Next up, we, we've got an exciting talk from Neil McGowan uh, of New Relic, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. So, Neil McGowan, Director of Digital Intelligence, very grand title. That's because uh, um, New Relic was uh, positioned as the digital intelligence platform uh, for a little while, so I inherited that title. Uh, but as I say, what that means is that I talk to customers about the problems that they're trying to solve. And what we see is, uh, with our customers, uh, we see a lot of trends in the market. DevOps is, is one of those, and we've seen how that's trending to become the mainstream uh, terminology for, for software development. What I want to talk about today is how doing DevOps right, doing DevOps without measurement, um, is, is doomed to failure. Uh, and I'll, I'll go through this as, uh, as quickly as I can. Um, but I want to bring to bear our experience with our customers in terms of measuring what matters in order to move uh, at velocity. Um, so who recognizes this logo? Yeah? Okay, um, I did this in, um, in Stockholm last week, and it was a very young audience, and there were people going, no, I don't recognize that logo. So I said, well, what, what about this one? Um, but uh, the, the, the point of this is that um, there are organizations out there that are not uh, transforming, or they're, they're transforming too late, or they're transforming in the wrong way. So, you know, if you look at the... The, uh, the ticket logo, I mean, the biggest issue with that organization wasn't the fact that they didn't adopt technology, that they didn't try and uh, go down the route of, uh, you know, online um, ordering of, uh, of videos, etc. It was the fact they didn't change their business, to be honest. They were more interested in selling popcorn and Coke to the people when they came into the stores than they were the media that people came in for. Um, and similarly with uh, uh, Jeffrey here, um, you know, a little bit uh, too late uh, in terms of transforming that business. And we're seeing this across industries uh, and, uh, you know, across the globe. So what is the key to success, right? What's going to determine whether or not you win or lose as a business? And that's speed and agility. If you listen to Gene Kim um, and the DevOps Handbook, that's going to determine whether or not you win your marketplace. And everything today is moving faster. But it's moving faster for a reason. It's moving faster because people are trying to transform their businesses. Um, and the promise of digital transformation is huge. I mean, you'll recognize some of these logos here. Um, but, you know, if I said to you, um, Ryanair, big customer of ours, um, how many people uh, like Ryanair? Ooh, everybody's sat on their hands. How many people dislike Ryanair? How many people use Ryanair? Right, okay, there you go. So um, they are an incredibly successful business, higher valuation than British Airways, but um, British Airways has its problems. Um, but a few years ago, they would describe themselves as an airline with a website. Now they describe themselves as a digital business that happens to operate a few aircraft. And fundamentally, if you want to buy a Ryanair seat, the only place you can get it is Ryanair.com. There are very few other channels. So if their digital channel is not available, they don't have a business. It's as simple as that. Um, de facto standard for measuring DevOps team sizes, pizzas, right? How many pizzas does it take to feed them? Um, Domino's, 80% of their revenue comes through digital channels. No longer is it phoning up or walking through the door. It's all done through digital channels. Uh, and a vast majority of their employees are actually involved in supporting that digital business as opposed to actually making pizzas. So you can see that the, you know, the promise of digital transformation is huge, but so are the challenges, right? Um, one in three cloud projects, I saw a lot of hands up earlier when uh, you were asked about who's using cloud. One in three cloud projects this year are doomed to failure, right? And there's many reasons for that, um, one of which is having incorrect expectations. What are you trying to get out of the cloud, uh, which is probably the main one. Um, We've already seen, you know, the bottom right-hand side there, you know, 50% of Fortune uh, 500 customers, um, uh, businesses from the year 2000 no longer exist. They've either been taken over, uh, they've dropped out the 500 uh, category, or they've gone bankrupt. And, um, you know, the IDC are predicting y y huge issues with downtime, et cetera. So the challenges are huge as organizations try and transform their businesses to become more competitive, to compete with the startups, the disruptors uh, in their industry. But what is digital transformation? Anybody in here have a definition of digital transformation? Because everybody's got a different one, right? Um, I have my own definition of digital transformation. Um, and I see digital transformation as having three primary domains. The first domain is that businesses can transform their delivery model, right? So they can use technology 
to transform the way in which they deliver their services. And cloud is one of those means, right? Let's, take, let's get out of the business of running data centers and get into the business of delivering our service and let somebody else run the stuff for us. So that could be a simple lift and shift. Uh, it could be you know, a change in um, processes and procedures around that. Uh, it could be a refactoring of the application uh, to drive more efficiency, et cetera. But typically, you know, if an organization is just looking at uh, transforming the delivery model, then what they're looking at is doing things more efficiently, reducing costs. And actually, that's one of the reasons why most cloud projects are doomed to failure. Because if you just lift and shift, then it's probably going to cost you more, right? And that's why uh, people set the wrong expectations. But the delivery model is typically something you see in the background. It, you know, it's not what a customer sees. The second area of digital transformation for me is the consumption model. This is what we tend to see as consumers, right? It's the fact I do my banking on my phone, that I order my tickets through the trainline.com, right? That I um, order my pizza using uh, either a Just Eat app or whatever it may be. Um, it's the way that people engage with your services that you're transforming, and that's what most people see and most people as consumers like. Transforming the customer experience, making it self-service, mobile, social, making it consistent and intuitive so that you don't need to go on a training course to learn how to order a pizza, right? And this is what most people see in terms of tra um, uh, digital transformation from the customer's perspective. And this is more about growing market share, customer loyalty, customer satisfaction, et cetera, exceptional digital customer experience. And then the third area, which is often missed out, is transforming the business model. If you get those other two right, then actually your business can become something completely different, right? You can open up new revenue streams, new geographies, um, create new uh, offerings. And you can also transform the way that your business operates, your organization, the way that you deliver software. And this is where the real value is. I mean, uh, many years ago, I was working with the, the Royal Mail. And um, you know, if you think about the Royal Mail, is there anybody from the Royal Mail in here? Uh, maybe tomorrow the second class delivery. But, um, uh, they, uh, they basically, um, you would think the Royal Mail was responsible for delivering letters, okay? Letters and parcels. I had a conversation with a few, them a few years ago and they said, yes, we do that, but we have a huge amount of information about 27 million households across the UK. We want to take that data and make money from it, right? So they wanted to generate revenue from the information that they have uh, on their, their uh, delivery points. And that would transform their business. So this is what organizations are doing. This is how um, businesses are evolving to become something different. So we saw some of these stats earlier. I, I did check uh, while Asif was presenting that my numbers were the same as his. <laughs> uh, but for, this is from the state of uh, DevOps report uh, 2017, right? Um, you know, 46% more co code deploys, 96% faster MTTR, et cetera. Uh, improved cooperation. This is what high performers in the DevOps space are achieving, right? This is what people want to get from uh, adopting DevOps. Um, but how do you get there, right? When you're faced with certain challenges. The challenges that we see uh, in the market from a DevOps perspective are twofold. First of all, you've got an increased number of stakeholders when you start changing the culture to work in this way. And those stakeholders have their own tools, their own metrics, their own way of viewing success, right? And basically what you've got is a stack of silos, different technologies, different KPIs, different perceptions. And this is quite key, you know, what one person perceives as being good, another person might perceive as being bad. Um, and then the second thing is that you have a huge increase in complexity. The architectures that we have today are far more complex than they were when I started out as a developer, right? Um, I, I'm prepared to admit I started out as a developer when languages didn't even have pluses on the end of them, right? And the, uh, um, the challenge for any budding developer was to write 
an application on a single line of code with no comments. Um, so, but now everything's dynamic. You know, we talk about utilizing cloud as an enabler to transform um, our services and our businesses. But, you know, you're spinning up architectures uh, and spinning them back down, auto-scaling. You've got containers, which, you know, years ago, we used to have servers that we treated as pets, right? They had names. You had a spreadsheet with all the names of the servers. I remember when I first started um, doing demos, uh, I used to work for a company called Mercury. Anybody remember Mercury? The testers in the room, right? So I used to do client-server testing demos. I had two laptops. One was called Itchy, one was called Scratchy, and they used to play the tune when they fired up. Um, but then we moved to virtual machines, and they have numbers, right? And they get treated like cattle. Yeah? So if one's poorly behaving, you just shoot it and start up another one. Containers that have been described, anybody heard the analogy like bees, worker bees, you know, flying in and out to, to do what you want to do. Um, and serverless. Anybody got a definition for serverless? Bacteria, I think, is, is probably the best thing. But things are changing so quickly, so rapidly, it's very difficult to understand what's going on. So actually, in the recent uh, 2018 State of DevOps report, this was actually highlighted, um, these, uh, these misconceptions uh, or uh, differences in, in perception of what's going on. So this was um, an example of where they, in the 2018 report, they they surveyed people from the C-suite, from management, and from the teams that were actually responsible for delivering the projects. Um, and there were some interesting differences in opinion. First of all, um, when it came to re-architecting applications, the C-suite, 57%, believed that that was done on a business needs basis, right? So we, we re-architect the, the things that matter for our business. Yet if you go down to the guys that are responsible for doing it, only 37% thought that was the case. Similarly, um, before starting a project, we have concrete success criteria. Of course we do. Nearly two-thirds of the C-suite believe we know exact, exactly what success means. Um, but less than half of the people responsible for delivery know what success means. And then finally, you know, the success metrics for a project are always visible to everyone. Of course they are. At the top, but down where you're responsible for delivering it, they're not. So this is this perception problem, and the fact that people are looking at different things, different sets of data in order to determine whether or not they're successful. And then in terms of the complexity, um, there, the report also showed that there was a big push to do automatic instrumentation, measuring things uh, automatically rather than doing them manually. So you can see you know, a big increase there in uh, automatically measuring um, uh, the system metrics that you're interested in and a huge increase in business level measurements. So defining what success looks like from a business perspective. So this basically leads on to the idea that, you know, instrumentation is key, right? You have to measure the things that matter. Now, I've already mentioned my, my history as a developer. Uh, and um, working for Mercury on the testing side of the house. Uh, so I remember well, you know, the old mantra from a waterfall perspective, doesn't go into production unless it goes through QA or unless we have to release it and QA's got squeezed down to one day rather than three months. Um, but that was the mantra. The mantra now in the DevOps uh, arena is you don't go into production without instrumentation. QA is important. It's part of the process. All right, but the fact of the matter is you're moving so fast, you are going to mess it up, right? And you are going to mess it up often. So the key thing is to make sure when you do, you know about it, you know about it fast, and you know what to do in order to resolve that problem. So this is where New Relic comes in. You know, we're helping over 17,000 customers with their, their initiatives. Uh, a lot of them are on a DevOps journey. Uh, some of them are very mature in that space. Some of them are just starting out on it. Um, but our customers send to us over 2 billion metrics a minute from their environments that we consume and scale to meet the demands of what they're doing. Their busiest day, whether that's, um, you know, if they're betting and gaming, it's Grand National. If they're retail, it's Black Friday, right? Um, if they're travel, it's, uh, 
every Monday when people go back to work, right? So um, we are helping those disruptors and those global enterprises transform their businesses through enabling them to measure what matters. And we do that based upon our own experience, right? So we ourselves, we're 10 years old. Uh, started in the APM space uh, in 2008. Um, and when we started, we had a monolithic application, Ruby Monolith. Um, and we had siloed teams, infrequent releases, etc. But we realized as we, as we started to scale that we had to do things differently. So even before you know, DevOps was, was a buzzword, we were already breaking our um, monolith into microservices. We were already breaking our silo teams up into small squads, engineering teams. Uh, we were putting site reliability engineers into those teams. We were accelerating our deployment uh, from you know, one deployment every week or so on to 20 to 70 deployments a day. If anybody knows New Relic, we have, if you, uh, count our products, we probably have six products and one platform, right? Or seven products, uh, no, six products and one platform. Um, yet we have over 50 engineering teams because people work on individual pieces of that solution and deliver innovation every day. And we use New Relic to manage that. Within our site rel reliability team, they say that you know, capturing the right data is critical to maintaining the culture and the momentum of the business. So this is the New Relic platform. Everybody put their hands up. They know New, New Relic, um, either from the bar or from actually uh, looking at the product. But we provide that end-to-end -end visibility, everything that's happening from the end user experience perspective. Remember I talked about digital transformation? It's transforming the consumption model, right? So everything that's happening in terms of those excellent digital customer experiences that you deliver, we can manage and monitor. Everything that's happening in the back end to support those, all of the transactions that are going through your system, the API calls, um, the microservice architecture, we can manage that at a code level. And the infrastructure, whether it's on-premise, whether it's physical virtual, whether it's cloud, whether it's serverless, containerized, we can manage that as well. Bring that all together in one platform and then give you actionable insights and intelligence as to what's going on. So why New Relic? This is a bit of an eye test. But fundamentally, it's easy to use, and it removes the toil around monitoring, right? You guys, you're the experts in developing, in building stuff, in delivering stuff, in making sure that it works, right? You don't have to be the experts in monitoring. We're the experts in monitoring use our service to allow you to focus on the things that make sense. This quote from Car Rentals is talking about that, exactly that, allowing engineers to focus on the things which are more high value to the business. So what does DevOps success look like with measurement? Um, fundamentally, we, we look at it three stages, right? Prepare, activate, and optimize. And you know, preparation is about where am I coming from? Where, what's my starting point? Let's instrument where I am now, understand the baseline, so I can determine whether I'm getting better or I'm getting worse. Then get fast feedback. Every change that you deploy, if you're deploying once a day, 10 times a day, 100 times a day, Airbnb deploy into their production environment 500 times a day, OK? What happens if one of those deploys impacts my customer experience? What does it mean to my business? You have to know the impact of every change. And then you also have to be continuously optimizing and improving, right? You can never rest on your laurels. So what does that look like on the New Relic platform? Well, from a baselining perspective, you can very quickly get an understanding of how your application currently performs from every perspective. The end user perspective, the application perspective, uh, and from the infrastructure perspective. So you know where you are, uh, whether you're on-premise or whether you're in the cloud or whether you're making that, you're moving that application into the cloud. You know exactly what your starting point is and then you can measure your results accordingly. From an activation perspective, what is the impact of every change? Quickly find and fix problems, right? As I say, you know, part of the mantra is, you know, fail fast, fail often. 
And we do it ourselves. We're making 20 to 70 deployments a day. We make mistakes. All right? And we have many examples where we can show that. But we still deliver a highly available performance service to those 17,000 customers. And then optimize. You know, how can we make things better? Where do we need to focus to improve? How can we deliver more for less? As we continuously analyze the performance, scalability, availability of those applications. So the KPIs that you may look at when it comes to measuring what matters, from a baselining perspective, it's the response time. You know, what do, what's the current response time we get, the error rates, you know, how long is it taking us to discover issues, and AppDex. Who's familiar with AppDex? Anyone? So this is sort of like a health indicator. It looks at the satisfaction of your users. So how many transactions or what percentage of transactions responded in a timely fashion, how many errored, et cetera. And it just gives you a number where you can say, am I getting better or worse? From an activation uh, perspective, what's the deployment rate, the number of failed deploys, the lead time for changes? How quickly does it take us to recover? And then ultimately on the um, optimized side, you know, what are the number of out of hours or after hours incidents? What's our compute consumption, right? So I think I mentioned earlier about moving to the cloud. If you do it for cost and the lift and shift, it's going to cost you more. So let's make sure if we're using those resources, we're getting the best value for money out of those resources. And what does it look like in terms of a day in the life of an empowered team? Well, you know, we're looking at dashboards which are giving us a view as to, you know, the, the current state, the response, response time by application, the errors by application, but also things like revenue, right? This application, what's it doing for our business? And are we moving the business in the right direction? Um, we, in the testing um, phase, we might be looking at the performance testing that we're doing. How has the behavior of the application changed as a result of this modification to the code? How's it impacting response times, resource consumption, et cetera? And then from a deployment perspective, how does this deploy compare to the previous deploy? automatically detecting changes in uh, consumption demands, response times, error rates, et cetera. And then finally alerting um, the appropriate teams when things have gone south so that they can rectify them as quickly as possible. And it's not just um, good practice to do this. It's actually a good investment, right? If you invest in instrumentation, the, the rewards are huge. If you look at like a 10-person team here, you know, the elimination of redundant work, being more efficient, reducing mean time to... No, nobody likes fixing problems, right? We all like writing new stuff. We don't like going back and fixing the stuff that we wrote earlier that was supposed to be perfect when we wrote it first time. So reduce all of that redundant work, identify stuff earlier in the cycle, and you can save, you know, many thousands of pounds or dollars in doing that. But accelerating your time to market, you know, driving that speed and innovation is where the real value comes. You know, being first to market with that new killer app, that new capability, that new functionality, which is going to drive your business forward and reduce customer churn, people that are moving to other apps, other businesses, because you're not innovating fast enough. And here are some examples of uh, customers of ours that are doing that. You know, Gannett, uh, the reason I put this up here is because uh, this election night that it refers to is 2016 in the US. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that one. Um, I thought it was a sitcom, to be honest with you, but it turned out to be the news. Uh, but they, they released, you know, 170 deployments into their production environment on one of the busiest nights of the year with total confidence. Uh, GE... You know, they're finding more problems earlier in their development cycle, so they're reducing rework. And, and nationwide, um, that's nationwide insurance. Uh, they're, you know, supporting over 200 teams uh, with better collaboration on the New Relic platform. So I'm going to finish. Um, I'm going to finish with one slide. I talked about how businesses need to transform, and they need to transform in three ways. Delivery model, consumption model, um, and business model. And this is by far the best example, I think, of that transformation. This is Ocado. 
and they've done all three. They've completely transformed the grocery business. Okay, and the reason I like this slide is because it's animated and it's got robots on it. Right? So, always useful at events like this. But without a doubt, they transformed the consumption model. Everything, Ocado, is digital, it's online, it's mobile app. They transformed the delivery model. Everything that they deliver from a, a technology perspective is in the cloud, but not only that, they've transformed their supply chain delivery model. So they use these robots, is there any, anybody familiar with the Ocado um, uh, fulfillment centers, right? This is a multi-story building, and this is the top of it, with these robots running across the top of it and just collecting the items that people have ordered and then delivering them as a, as a package uh, at the end of the chain. Uh, and they've absolutely transformed their business model. So if, if I was to say, you know, what is Ocado? Six months ago, it's the world's largest online-only grocery business. As of about two months ago, they're a technology company. They sell this technology across the globe, and I think it was in May, they signed a deal with Kroger to provide 25 fulfillment centers and the technology to deliver this business in the US. Their share price went up 50% in one day. Okay? So this is the promise of digital transformation. Digital transformation is founded on driving speed and innovation and DevOps is the key to that. So with that, thank you very much.